How does Swirl Slime relate to Ragnarok? Is John the Ark the rebel of the DD? Is Vucic But then why is the rebel? Why is there why is a Alexander a with What's with the Imperial Lords? <gasps> oh, thank God, it was a dream. What time is it? 2022? Well, you know what they say, another year or another video, am I right? <laughs> I have crippling depression. Well, anyways, I'm sorry for not uploading for so long, but when I wanted to upload, I wanted to make a DDD lore video because no one seems to have made one. And I thought, sure, why not? It's gonna be a short and sweet video, and boy, was I wrong. Fully grasping the DDD lore requires you to know a little bit about mythology, history, science, Yu Gi Oh! show lore, other archetype lores, manga lores. The in-universe lore of the Yu-Gi-Oh! universe, occultism, law, business and more and more and more and it's so deep. So in order not to give you a video that sounds like Well, actually these are different dimension demons and they have warriors and scientists and they are dark type girl. I would have to do some reading. Lots and lots of reading. And you know us Yu-Gi-Oh players in reading, am I right? It also required me to watch episodes of the anime and you don't wanna know how many I watched. And now I had enough information to talk casually about DDD lore for an hour, an actual hour of different information. So I compiled all of the information and was ready to make the video and then I realized, oh, I have to edit this. No! <laughs> Why? Why would I come up with that? Why would I come up with that? That's this, this is, oh, this is gonna be so much work. But I gotta do it. I've gotta fucking, but I gotta do it, haha. -ha! Cause once I have an idea, I, I can't just not do it, right? I'm so goddamn sick and tired of being me. Ah, uh, <laughs> thanks for coming up with this one, brain. <laughs> what a kooky adventure, fuck you. So in order not to overload your brains with so much information and turn you into a brain golem, I've decided to split this into a multiple part series. I hope you enjoy the journey into discovering the real DDD lore. Here we go! Welcome to the year 550 BC. Cyrus the Great established the Great Persian Empire and was henceforth known as the King of the Universe. Cyrus has fathered two sons, Cambyses and Bardia. It has been decided that Cambyses would be the new king, while Bardia would be his loyal lieutenant. After conquering Egypt, it was looking like the Persian Empire would prosper under the rule of Cambyses, but with a simple signing of a dark contract, it would all soon change. A young aspiring Persian that was serving under Cambyses, Darius, signed this pact. But with whom did he sign it and for what purpose? While marching on Nubia, Cambyses suffered his first great loss. It was like the African desert itself decided to fight his army. The army of Cambyses was buried in the desert where it supposedly remains until this very day. The new king slowly descended into madness. He killed the great divine bull Apis of Egypt by stabbing it in the thigh. He did it after realizing that Egyptians were celebrating while he had lost many of his men. Later that night, the king had a dream that his brother was sitting on the throne and his fears and delusions influenced him to send assassins after his brother. However, a mage's named Gaumata, who was said to look like king's late brother, rallied the people of Persia to rebel against the Mad King. The Mad King Cambyses rushed to quell the rebellion, but while jumping onto his horse, his sword stabbed himself into the thigh by accident. Or was it an accident? I've fallen! And I can't get up! The Mad King died of infection, realizing that his brother would sit on the throne, even if it was the imposter. 
with his last dying breath, he urged his assistants to quell the rebellion in his place and stop the usurper. My friends, I'm Also, subscribe to Thunder Normal. Okay, bro, no worries. Amongst his closest assistants was Darius I. Darius spearheaded the assassination of the false Magus king, and it is said that he was able to open the great stone gates of the capital all by himself. After slaying the false Magus, Darius became the new king, and it is said that he led Persia into the great era of prosperity. It would seem that the contract that he had signed on the stone tablet handed him the keys to the kingdom, but at what cost? After his death, Darius appeared in front of a great shadowy figure and now was imbued with the power of the earth and the axis. Now let us warp into the future, the year 356 BCE, a year in which Alexander III of Macedon was born to the King Philip II and his wife Olympia. Philip wanted Alexander to become a great leader and had even hired Aristotle to be his mentor. Young Alexander was bound for greatness due to his father's efforts. However, Alexander's great relations with his father would soon dwindle as he divorced his wife Olympia in order to marry Cleopatra Eurydice. I don't need a wife. My job fucks me. Alexander and his father fought about that and Alexander has left his father's side with his mother. Alexander would eventually reconcile with his father, but King Philip would soon be assassinated by his own guards nonetheless. And Alexander would become the new king of Macedonia. Notice the similarities already. Could Alexander have signed a contract similar to Darius? Well, of course he did. This is a DDD lore video, not a history video. Let me explain what happened next. Alexander then spread the rumor about Philip not being his real father, stating that his real father was Zeus himself. His mother Olympia allegedly got pregnant by getting hit by a lightning bolt. However, I believe this to be a lie that Alexander spread in order to cover up for his newly gained amazing godly powers. Here we go. Okay. In the case of one year old and Alexander the Great, Dr. Phil. You are not the We father. are done! We are done! You are my Lord! Tomorrow morning! Alexander the Great, as we know him today, had never lost a single battle. He toppled down the Persian Empire and had even liberated Egypt. It is said that before every battle, gods would speak through him through the winds, letting him know how to win the battle that was afoot. After liberating Egypt, he made his way to Memphis to seek out the sanctuary of Apis, the same cow deity that Cambyses stabbed in the thigh in the previous story. He offered sacrifices to it, and in return the priestess of that temple proclaimed him a pharaoh, bestowing upon him the honorific beloved by Amun, Amun being the god of wind in Egypt. Some history books even say that after conquering all of the land, Alexander wanted to conquer the heavens themselves, but he died at the age of 32. As we all know, his story doesn't end there, as the contract that had given him the power to conquer the world hasn't yet been fulfilled. Alexander, alongside Darius, appeared in front of a mysterious figure with horn atop his head. Alexander now in his afterlife, imbued with the power of wind and synchro. The year is 100 BC and Gaius Julius Caesar was born to a noble family. Despite being Roman nobles, they were not particularly rich due to Caesar's father passing away while Caesar was still a young child. Caesar's uncle Marius granted young Caesar the position of high priest of Jupiter, which would ensure him a safe and comfortable life. Sadly, all would not go as planned for young Caesar, as Rome was in the midst of a civil war. A war which his uncle promptly lost, thus robbing Caesar of his priesthood and inheritance. Free of his title, Caesar decided to join the army in order to provide for his family. This, unfortunately, also did not work out for him. In the beginning, that is. At a certain point in his life, he was captured by pirates. The pirates, knowing that he was a noble, demanded a ransom of 20 talents of silver. 
which is about 620 kilograms or 1367 pounds of silver. The cocky young Caesar berated the pirates and demanded that they ask for 50 talents of silver instead. He stated that 1550 kilograms or 3417 pounds was the appropriate price for him, as 20 talents was offensively low a ransom for someone as notable as himself. The pirates of course agreed and Caesar sent off his associates to gather the silver. A month had passed and they still didn't return. It was at that time, the lowest point of Caesar's life, that he decided to sign a dark contract of a similar variety as the one signed by Alexander and Darius. And sure enough, 38 days after his abduction, Caesar's associates came back and paid the ransom. As he had promised beforehand, Caesar, just after he was released, managed to gather a small fleet, hunt down and capture all of the pirates. swiftly taken his 50 talents back, then proceeded to crucify the pirates after slicing their throats. With his newly granted divine luck, Caesar proceeded to become Rome's dictator and one of its greatest leaders, but after the top 10 anime betrayals, number one. <laughs> afterlife wielded the power of water and the Xyz, standing beside Stone King Darius, Gust King Alexander and... The year is 1162 AD and the young Temujin was born to one of Mongolia's many tribes. When he was just 9 years old, his father took him to live with the family of his future bride. On his way back, Temujin's father encountered members of the rivaling tribe. They offered him a meal and invited him to negotiate peace between the two tribes. But the food that Temujin's father was given was poisoned. When young Temujin heard what happened, he rushed back home to take his rightful place as the tribe leader. His request was denied by the tribe members due to him being only 9 years old. At that point of his life, young Genghis swore revenge and signed it, you guessed it, a dark contract. With his newly gained powers, Genghis killed his half-brother and established himself as the leader of the clan. Throughout his years as the leader, Temujin, now known as Genghis Khan, managed to avenge his father's death and also unite many of the Mongolian tribes. He was an innovative war leader, using a system of torches and fire and smoke to relay long-distance messages, and who can forget his cruel siege methods of wrapping birds in cotton, lighting them on fire and then letting them loose back into the town from which they were taken from, burning it to the ground. After his death, Genghis Khan, the great warlord appeared alongside the other great warriors who had signed a dark contract with a mysterious entity, ready to repay the debt that allowed him to avenge his father's death. Ok guys, explanation time. Even at a glance you can see that the DDD archetype is divided amongst warriors, dark contracts, mythical creatures, scientists and various ends of the world. Ragnarok, Apocalypse, Kali Yuga and so on. But the curious thing about warriors is that only four of them are non-dark. After going into the history of their characters, you can clearly see that each of them had an event in their life in which a deus ex machina saved them from certain demise and rose them to the top of the world. Now if we take the dark contracts into the consideration, you can clearly see that someone or something is making them with various people throughout history in order to give them what their heart desires in return for eternal servitude. 
but who is that someone or something and why does it want people to serve it eternally is a question for another video. I hope that you've enjoyed this one and I hope you'll stick around for more. Please consider liking the video and subscribing to the channel because we are so close to 500 subs. And because I spent so much time editing this I just wanna go to sleep. You liked the video so it was worth it, right? Right? I'll see you in the next one, bye!